first thing I would be throwing if I ran up on a bedding fish is going to be a Texas rig craw with a tungsten weight, bobber stop, and a glass bead. I like red beads, but it's more for noise and looks, if you can hear. You're looking for that kind of action. But the craw I like to use is the Z-Man Turbo Craws. It's that last tech, so it floats. So it'll be sitting up like this. And you go and just bounce it through the bed. And let it sit. Give it a little jiggle. You can hear that bead clicking. That gives the bass the notion that the crawdad is digging through the bed looking for the eggs. So that is my number five first bait that I would throw. The second bait that I would throw. Now the reservoirs that I fish mostly have bluegill and crawfish as their main forage. There are split tail minnows and other kinds of little minnows and other bait fish, but we don't have any shad in the local ones that I go to. There are some in California, but around the Bay Area, they're not as prevalent but I like a black and chartreuse jig three quarter ounce or three eighths ounce football with some sort of larger creature bait this is the strike king rage tail uh, structure bug but this gives more of a blue guy bluegill slash crawfish profile but you hop it through just like the Texas rig and just bounce it and these little feet and appendages kick out that bass doesn't like it takes it and runs off with it set the hook that is number four Number three, this is a three and eight ounce Wu Tungsten Shaky Head with a Rage Lizard. I'm not even sure if they sell these anymore. I haven't seen them in a while. But if you can find them, these are like the best lizards I've fished with. This is in a smoke um, blood red. It's got red and blue flake in it, but these have the rage tails. The, I don't know if you guys can see that really well or not, but they have a lip on all their appendages that give them more kicking action. But I really like the uh, shaky head when they're being finicky because shaky heads can push that lizard. And in this area, especially... We have a high salamander population in the reservoirs that I fish the most. And it helps to get the lizard in there, but a lot of the time the lizards lay flat. And then you drag them through. But this makes it look like that lizard is looking for those eggs. Bass picks it up, pop it, reel it in. This is a 3 8 ounce, so you can throw it easily on a bait caster for those really big ones. Uh, number two is a swinging jig head. 3 quarter ounce football swinging, swinging jig head with a summer craw that bright chartreuse on the belly 
to the dark on the top. This gives the perfect little bluegill profile as well as you can get the craw off of these back appendages if they're not hitting. You can take these little appendages off and play the craw game. But if they are protecting from bluegill on those nests, if they're locked on and you throw this through, just drag it around, banging it on this whatever's on the ground there, make it look like it's searching. And that will light them up. And this chartreuse belly that this summer craw has makes it really easy to see. Uh, the lakes that I fish mostly are heavily pressured. I mean, there's three or four people fishing them at any given moment. And so those like bright white pearls that a lot of people like to fish with don't usually work as well here. The bass have gotten pretty smart to bed fishing. But if you use more of a natural chartreuse color, you can get that visibility as well as getting the natural presentation. So that's number two. Now the number one bait is kind of a mixture and it's more relevant if you have ponds or if your main forage in your lake is bluegill. But this is right before the spawn and into the spawn, I like to throw a Gantrail Junior or a soft hammer tail bluegill bait, swim bait. This is the Nest Raider bluegill. It's weighted in the nose, so as you go through, it pounces nose down. It's got a nice thick hook. This is mat lures. You can see how realistic this one is. This is really good for those oversized bass. You know, four or five pound range and bigger. But you can see I've gotten one or two on it. But these are good for the real big ones when they're highly pressured because they're so lifelike. But when you have the big the males on the beds and the females are still just outside of the beds or they're still cruising feeding up these work extremely well the gantrell junior this is in a uh, reservoir gill ghost you can see it's almost see-through which our reservoirs here where i am are extremely clear um, not right now because we just had a bunch of rain, but um, so I go with the ghost color uh, when the water turns out to be clear, and I try to. So I go with the ghost color uh, when the water's clear, and if it's not clear, I'll go with one of the other options. So this is more towards the beginning of the spawn. You can fish it during the spawn if you want to try to get in those beds. But I suggest putting a weight on the nose. There's a loop here on the bottom. Put some kind of drop shot weight. Preferably a tungsten that's um, smaller. Because tungstens are a lot smaller than lead weights. And they will nose down like this. The only problem with fishing this into a bed is if there's any uh, wood laid down around it or thick vegetation, these treble hooks are just going to get stuck, and you're going to have you're going to scare that whole best that whole bed out. Um, so only fish this on rocky beds that are small, pebbly rocks with a clear surrounding. But this is a very good full action bait and the way I fish it around the beds before the the females are locked on is you do a, throw, a few slow turns 
past just up to the bed and when you're like two or three feet away from the bed burn it up burn it up to the bed and then dead it dead stick it and it'll and then start to slowly sink and then you just pop it out and then when you pop it out they'll think that the, the bluegill has gotten to the eggs and it'll take it on that pop out of the nest all right i'm just trying to put up some content because of the quarantine hope you guys like if you guys want to hear any more tackle tips or anything like that i got a lot of tackle we can go through thank you for watching uh please subscribe like comment all that good stuff thank you